Hello my friends and welcome to the third part of our five video series for design trends and today I'm going to show you how to do the neon light look. So we're going to start with this picture, you can see no neon light in there and go into this direction. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer from Vienna, Austria. And before we get started today, I want to ask you for your feedback. Because as you know, it's super important to support your creators on YouTube. So of course I do have a Patreon and you can find it in the video description. But I understand that some of you don't like the subscription model. So I came up with an idea how you can support me per episode if you like to. Um, so as you can see here, I've selected a small number of episodes I will also do it with this episode you can support me with a small donation you get as a reward my affinity file with all the layers included and um, I want to get your feedback if you like this idea if you think it's a bad idea or if you have any other kind of idea how um, you can support me outside of the subscription model okay thank you very much and let's get started with this so the first thing we're gonna do for this tutorial is to select her skin area. So we're gonna go up here to the selection brush and roughly brush over her skin areas. This doesn't have to be too exact because we are gonna feather the selection pretty hard in a second. So let's go like this and let's go to subtract actually to reduce some parts that have seen a little bit too much attention from our selection brush. Uh, let's go to add again at the finger up here again. So this is good enough, I would say. Um, so let's go up here to select and feather and make a pretty white feather. So feather means that it's blurring our selection. So I will enter 150 pixels for this. There we go. You can see it made it very soft on the outside. And I'm going to click down here on mask layer. So this is going to create a mask. And now I can click Control D on my keyboard or, or press Control D. And now let's right click on the mask layer to duplicate it. There we go, duplicate. And then I'm going to, with the mask layer selected, go up here to layer and invert. So we have a selection inside and a selection outside. In between we have this faded area. Um, that is going from one mask to the other. And now we want to create the light for our neon light. So to do this, I'm going to select the rectangle tool down here, click and drag it all over the picture, and then click up here where it says fill and select a nice color. I would always suggest to use the HSL color wheel because it gives you very nice and quick access to colors. I'm gonna select a blue color, of course, and it should be a neon color too. And we're going to duplicate this layer, duplicate, and then uh, we are going to pull one of the masks on each of the layers. So there we go. Here is one mask and there is the other mask. And in the preview, you can already see what it's doing. So this mask down here, we can call this layer skin and we can call the other one scene because it's the background scene. There we go. Okay, so now we have to adjust them and we will select our scene layer and put this to the blend mode color and then reduce it to about 65%. So there we go, this is good. And then we go to our skin color and we are gonna set this um, to overlay. There we go. And reduce this to 30%, around 30%, that's good. Okay, very nice. So you can see already we have something that is like a neon look, but we have to do a lot more adjustments to make it look more real, more interesting. So the first thing that I want to do is go down here to adjustments and select color balance. There we go. And this will an, an enable us to, uh, to influence all the colors from the layers below. So I will pull our cyan red, balance to minus 100 the magenta we can go for around i think maybe 50 so and this is really up to you here you can play around with what you like you can see already the colors are changing in a very nice neon kind of way 
and we are going to create another adjustment layer, this one for white balance. And white balance has a very interesting influence on the colors. You cannot just use it to create a nice white balance. You can also use it to adjust your colors. So as you can see here, this gives even a better look for it. And the next thing after we are done with this one is we going to create another adjustment layer for curves this time and we want to have more contrast so what we're going to do is up here in the these are the areas for the white or light areas and these are for the dark or black areas in the pictures down here so we want to have a high um, white or very bright white values uh, but also darker um, black values so we are creating this kind of s shape here i'm going to pull this in here a little bit so it's just influencing uh, this, uh, these top white areas, the highlights basically of the picture and pull this a little bit more down. So, okay, that's good. Good. The next thing that I'm gonna do, and you know I like to abuse uh, the way how filters work uh, for different purposes that are not intended for. So I'm gonna select my skin layer. I'm gonna go to effects and then click down here on 3D. 3D is not intended for this kind of thing, but you can use 3D as, um, how can I say, a light simulation, and that's pretty cool. So I'm gonna set my ambient light, actually, also to this kind of neon color, and now I can play around uh, with how bright or soft the light should be um, in this area. And this is really just influencing the skin area, so that's very nice. You could also play around with the direction down here, and this gives you very different effects, and this is why I like this filter so much. Um, it's intended to create a 3D look, but you can use it as a virtual studio light, so that's really, really cool. And you can see this makes the picture look more interesting and gives us more influence over um, how our skin area in the picture is looking. Okay, so... Another thing that I like to do is um, you can see that the blue colors look very neon light, but it's also very uniform. And I don't like this. I like more life and um, action and kind of a movement in my picture. So to create this kind of movement, what we're going to do is, uh, first of all, go back to layers and then um, create another layer for with the rectangle tool. So click the rectangle tool and then click and pull it over all of the picture like we have done before. And now when we click on the fill color, we are going to go to gradient, set it to radial, so it's a circle. And then on the left ball that we have up here, we're gonna set the color to pink. And on the right one, we're gonna set it to white. There we go, and set the opacity to zero. So it's fading out. Okay, now that we have done this, we are clicking over here to our gradient tool and this gives us these adjustment settings. So I will take first the one on the right, this white ball, move it over to this side and then take the other one and move it up to the corner up here. And again, take the white one and move it down to the other corner down here. So um, with this selected, we can now adjust the blend mode to soft light like this. And as you can see, this gives a very nice fade of the color from a violet over to a cold blue. So it's a very nice effect. It's a very nice way to play around and make the picture a little bit more interesting. Of course, you can reduce the effect a little bit. So I'm gonna set it maybe to like 80%. And um, this already looks very nice. Another thing that I like to do now is I want to influence just the darker areas of the picture. So I'm gonna select my picture layer, um, go up here to select, and then select tonal range and just the shadow. So these are just the dark areas of the picture. And again, go to select feather. And this time we're gonna feather it by 30 pixel. It's pretty soft still, but not as soft as before. And with this selection still active, we're gonna click down here on adjustments and select our curves. There we go, curves. Uh, now we can control D on our keyboard to deselect and you can see down here that this has automatically from the selection created a mask for our curve adjustment layer. And this will help us now when I pull this down 
to just influence the darker areas in my picture, just the shadows, to give me a little bit more contrast. Um, so that's a very nice way to do that. Okay, the last thing that I want to do is to uh, clean up our masks a little bit. So I will click on uh, the one for the scene, actually, this down here. Zoom in here, so you can see it didn't do a great job over here. We have to paint it in here a little bit more. Um, select white as the color. There we go. Um, a brush size and a hardness working for you. I would suggest to reduce the opacity to 50% or lower uh, because this gives you the ability to paint over this multiple times. So you can go even with 25% or lower. Um, and this makes it in general easier to paint in masks because you can brush over it several times until you get the result that you want to have. So it's um, you can be a bit less exact and it still works pretty great. Okay, there we go. Let's zoom out. Nice. So this is fixed now, this kind of uh, corner down there. And you can see we have very nice um, light in our picture. Of course, you can still play around with all of the adjustments in the picture to get a different kind of look. Uh, let's go back to this one here, for example, and you can still go in here to the 3D settings and uh, change how this should look. For example, here you can have more of a glow look. So there's a lot of possibilities in here to be artistic, to be interesting and create something that you want to have. Um, yeah, so this was the tutorial for today. Thank you very much for watching. And like I said, give me your feedback on this new idea of supporting me per episode outside of subscriptions and as a reward, getting my affiliate file with all the layers. If this is something for you or if you would like to see another reward, um, yeah, thank you very much and see you next episode. Bye.